Father in heaven, we ask that you will speak through your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, let's turn to our first text this morning in First Chronicles. Go to First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles 12. Are you there, family? I'm still here with pages. It's awesome. Let's go to verse 32. First Chronicles 12, verse 32. The Bible reads, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the, what everybody? Times. Hmm. To know what Israel ought to do. So the Bible says the children of Issachar, they understood the times in which they were living. And since they understood the times, they understood that there was something that they had to do. Time. The question is asked this morning. Do you believe that we're living in the last days, yes or no? Yes. So are we living at the beginning of time or the end of time? End of time. So we must ask ourselves the question, what should we be doing with the time that we have? Very right, good. Get ready and witnessing. Excellent. Let's go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Yes, witnessing, sharing our faith, that is all correct. Now let's look at what Jesus connects to time. Okay? The time what we, in, that we have, what should we be doing? Because Issachar understood the times and what they ought to do. The Bible says in Mark chapter 1, are you there, family? Mark chapter 1, verse 15, the Bible says, and Jesus speaking, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So here Jesus says, he, he, he used the word time, and we do know that a time prophecy came to fulfillment. And Jesus says this prophecy, uh, referring to his baptism, the time is at hand. He says, what you need to be doing, what I need to be doing, he says, what's the R word there? Repent. repent. Now, what, now, now, answer this. Is, is this an illustration of repentance, this right here? Is that repentance? No, that's the 360. Repentance says, you're going towards sin. That door, the exit door, that's sin. Repentance says, you turn from sin and you run to Jesus. That's a 180, not a 360. A 360, you go back into your sin. So Jesus says, time is fulfilled. Turn from sin and believe the gospel. Now that's Jesus. We're going to talk about repentance this morning. Remember, we started a series last month. Remember, we looked at those three Seventh-day Adventists who did not repent. You remember them? And so we're going to continue our series this morning on repentance. Because time is coming to an end. And we need to repent of sin. Let's go to, let's go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Let's go there. What we're going to do, we're going to, Joshua chapter 6, our scripture reading, we're going to study a story this morning, just a story, one of my favorite stories in the Bible, because it's, it's very dramatic, it's a lot of drama there. 
And we're going to look at the danger. You see the title this morning, Keeping, Keeping Secrets? We will see the danger in keeping a secret sin from God. Okay? It is very dangerous to have a secret sin and not tell God about it. Does that make sense? Dangerous. Oh, yeah, he knows. But I should say it's very dangerous not to confess it. Because you have to confess, even though he does know. If you do not confess that sin, we will see the trouble that comes with that. Okay? But of course, you know, I, I, I always lift up Jesus. Because it's all about him. It's all about Jesus. So, secret sin this morning. So, we have some examples of secret sins on the screen. Um, you have covetousness, pornography, fornication. We have tax season, cheating on taxes. <laughs> I hope no one's doing that. <laughs> on forgiveness, you know, some people, they, they just hold a grudge. Someone did something wrong to them in high school. They're in their 80s, and they're still holding on to that unforgiving spirit. That can be a secret sin. Or what, everybody? What's that? Now, now let me clear that up. <laughs> now, Facebook, having a Facebook page, that, that's not a sin. I know two... <clears throat> I know of two women who were married, and they decided to go on Facebook and to chat with their former boyfriends. This is true stories. Two of these women, they left their husbands and their children, went back to their country, all because of Facebook. So I put Facebook here because if you are online on Facebook and you're chatting with your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, that is a sin. You know, some people say, well, I can chat and communicate with my ex, and I will be okay. That's dangerous. You are putting yourself on dangerous ground. So that's what I mean when I have Facebook on the list of secret sins. Because your spouse can be chatting with someone, and you have no idea. If that's the case, cut it off. Dangerous. Dangerous. The Bible says in Joshua 6, verse 18, Joshua speaking to the children of Israel, and the context is, you remember the children of Israel, they marched around what city seven times? Jericho. Jericho, Jericho you know, God did a miracle and the walls came down. And God says, don't take certain things. They belong to me. The Bible says in verse 18, And you in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, unless ye make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the, who everybody? The Lord. They shall come into the treasury of, of the Lord. Is that very clear instruction, yes or no? Yes. yes. So Joshua says to the children of Israel, all of you, you are the children of Israel this morning. Joshua says, look guys, don't take the silver or the gold. They belong to God. Very clear. Or if you do steal you will make the children of Israel, the camp, you will bring a curse. Wow. No one wants to be cursed. Chapter 7. So that's the context, chapter 7 now. In chapter 7, the children of Israel, they decide to have a battle, to go to a city named Ai. They go to the city, about 3,000 of them, it was supposed to be a very easy victory. What happens was that, I think 36, about 36 men from Israel, these soldiers, 36 men, they died and they ran from the enemy. They took off. And so Joshua now, he, he falls on his face and he pleads to God, basically, why, why did this happen to us? Why did 36 men perish. This was supposed to be an easy victory. You know, when I look at the Bible and I look at these stories, 
this is real life, folks. 36 men were killed because one man sinned. There was a man by the name of Achan. Achan decided to hold unto a secret sin. And so now you have 36 families without a father. You have 36 families without a spouse because of one man. So that's the context of the story. Go to verse 10 of Joshua 7. Joshua 7, verse 10. Now whatever you do, do not miss this story, okay? Joshua 7, verse 10, the Bible says, Joshua's on his face pleading with God. And God says unto Joshua, get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? So God, he says to Joshua, he says, hey son, man, get up. Why are you lying on your face? Next verse, 11. Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen. God says in chapter 6, don't steal. And dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Verse 12. Therefore, now this is why they lost the battle. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed from among you. God says in clear language through Joshua, I will no longer be with the children of Israel unless they destroy what they have stolen. That's very serious. Because when God says he will no longer be with you, you are in big trouble. No one wants to hear that from God, amen? God says, hey, I will no longer be with you if you're holding on to this sin, this accursed thing. Now watch the grace of God. Watch God. The Bible says in verse 13, this is the solution. Up, God is talking to Joshua, up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Everybody shout tomorrow. tomorrow. You call that a shout? <laughs> you all awake this morning? <laughs> all right, we're going to do that again, all right? Everyone shout tomorrow. Very good. <laughs> I said, now listen to what Joshua, remember you all are the children of Israel. I'm Joshua, and Joshua is giving a message to you all. Listen to what Joshua says. San verse 13, sanctify the people against tomorrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel, thou cannot stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. So God says, speaking to Israel through Joshua, he says, look, there is an accursed thing amongst you all. And I'm going to give you, God is going to give you until tomorrow to get rid of it or to confess that sin. God was so good and so gracious, God gave Achan time to confess his sin. Achan had an entire night because when Joshua gave the announcement that there is an accursed thing among you, Achan was sitting right there in the camp. Achan was sitting down, listening to Joshua. Achan must have been thinking, well, surely God is speaking about someone else. <laughs> must have been what he was thinking. Well, I pay my tithe. I go to church faithfully. I'm a pretty decent person. God is speaking about someone else, maybe from the tribe of Issachar or Levi. Not me. I'm a good guy. And Achan sits down in the congregation and he's listening. And God gives some time to repent. Listen to the next verse. Verse 14. Joshua is still speaking to Israel. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought among according to your tribes, 
And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. Now listen to how God breaks it down. God says well, we're, what's going to happen in the morning through Joshua. Israel is going to come before me, and I'm going to select the tribe first. Out of the tribe, I will select the clan. And out of the specific clan or family, I will select man by man to catch the person who stole. Wow. Question, was God crystal clear in his instructions? Now listen to the punishment in the next verse. Verse 15. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be what? If you want to be burned with fire, shout amen. <laughs> right? <laughs> and Noah says amen to that one. No one wants to be burned with fire. Isn't that right? Even when you get a little burn on your finger, it does not feel good. So listen, verse 15. Shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So get the picture, folks. Achan, I'm Joshua, you're Israel. Joshua speaks to you all, and Joshua says, the punishment is... If you do not get right, you and all that you have will be burned with fire tomorrow. And Achan, he is sitting down the entire time. Now, can you imagine? How do you think Achan must have slept that night? <laughs> in his sleep. Have you ever had something so heavy on your mind that you just could not sleep? Right? I mean, you're tossing and you're turning, you're stressed out the situation at work, maybe at church or with your spouse or with your children. You're going through a hard time. How did Aiken sleep that night? I can't imagine. The morning comes. The sun rises. Listen to what the Bible says. Wow. The Bible says in verse 16, So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of who, everybody? Judah. Judah. Now, this is Achan's tribe. So, so early in the morning, you have how many tribes in Israel, by the way? Twelve. So you have twelve tribes before Joshua. Twelve tribes are here. And Joshua selects the tribe of Judah. So what happens now? Out of the twelve, the tribe of Judah and all their families, they step forward. Wow. The Bible says in verse 17, And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. Wow. You know who Zabdi was? Zabdi was the grandfather of Achan. Oh, man, you got to, don't miss the picture. Brother, this is deep. The tribe of Judah is taken, and Achan knows that he's guilty. He stole something. He's there. The tribe of Judah gets called out. Achan and his family, they're with the tribe of Judah. Then the Bible says they're going to do it by family. The Zarhites, they were called. The family there. Achan's family. And Zabdi was taken. That's the granddaddy of Achan. In other words, it's getting closer and closer to Achan, and he still does not repent. Oh. You hear what I said? That's like you. That's like me. Our family's being called out. We know that we're guilty. My granddaddy just got selected, and I know I'm the one that stole, and I keep my mouth shut, and I don't even confess or repent. Wow. Watch the drama. The Bible says in verse 18, And he brought his household man by man, 
and uh, who everybody? Wow. The son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. Verse 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Verse 20. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Verse 21. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold and a 50 shekels weight, then I coveted, that's the secret sin, I coveted them and took them and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Wow. You read that? Do you see how sad that is, brothers and sisters? I'm going to ask a question. I want an answer. Question. Did Achan confess of his sin? Of course he did. In verse 19, Joshua says, make a confession. He goes on and he says, hey, I saw this Babylonian garment. I saw this gold and the silver, and I took it and I buried it. Again, I'm going to ask the question. Did Achan confess of his sin? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he confessed to Joshua. He confessed to Joshua. But you know what? Achan was still punished because his confession was not genuine. Exactly. He only confessed after he got caught. Are you following that? He had all night to go to Joshua and go to God and confess. But only after Joshua said, Achan, come forward. Aiken then says, yeah, man, I messed up. Yeah, yeah, I dropped the ball. I stole. You, know, you know how silly this is? The Bible says he stole a Babylonian garment. Babylonian garments were very, very fancy. They had nothing like that amongst themselves in Israel. They were very plain people. And so what Aiken does, Aiken stole a garment he could never, ever wear. In other words... He stole something he could not use. If you're going to steal something, use it. If you're going to steal a car, don't sit in it, drive it. <laughs> right? And, I mean, the, the story is showing us that sin makes you ignorant. That's the nature of sin. You will steal something you can never ever. You got to. He was so silly. He had to take a shovel. <laughs> In his tent, dig up the earth and put that garment inside of it and cover it back up. Dumb. Ignorant. Why? That's the nature of sin. Look what he did. He be- how silly. Look how silly this is. Just silly. What are you doing, Aiken? You had time to repent. But because he did not repent, watch the drama. The Bible says in verse 22, And Joshua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out, now listen, and they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua, unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Now watch verse 24. God of mercy. And Joshua. And all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and, listen, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. God says, get everything Achan owns. Woo! Get, don't leave any stone unturned. Did God say, get Achan's animals, yes or no? Question. Do animals sin? It shows us the destructive nature of sin. Sin is so bad. God says to Achan, 
through, uh, through Joshua to Achan, bring everything out. Your sons, bring your kids out. Your daughters, get all of the animals you own. I'm going to destroy everything. Why? Because you held on to a secret sin. Ooh. You brought a curse upon Israel. Now I'm going to destroy you. Watch the Bible. Watch how the drama unfolds in verse 25. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel, what? Stone him with stones and burn them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. I'm done. My Bible's closed. I've been preaching for like 22 minutes. Done. You know it doesn't take long to preach a sermon? It just takes long for folk to accept Jesus. Here the Bible tell, it just told us. Achan is before the children of Israel with his family. That's like me standing before you with my wife and my daughter and all that I possess. The Bible says the children of Israel were instructed to take stones. In other words, I would be standing before you guilty and you all will be standing and you all will have one response. You'll be bending down. Hey, hey, pick up that big stone over there. Hey, you, you, hey, get that stone over there. We're going to stone them. Can you imagine what that must have been like? You got people picking up stones to kill you. Those folk, they just start hurling those stones. Stoned them, the Bible says. Israel stoned them. After they, can you imagine the scene? You have the entire family stoned to death. You have the animals stoned to death. All of the animals. The tent is destroyed. All because you have one man who decided, I'm going to hold on to the secret. You know why his family got destroyed? Because his family, they knew all about the sin. They plotted. They knew it. They knew about it. The children knew, the kids knew, because God is not going to destroy someone in ignorance. They knew. And Achan should have been the priest of his home, but instead of being the priest, his entire family was in on the plan. God says, okay, I'm going to destroy everything. But before I destroy, I'm going to give you time. You know what some people say? Well, I can't serve a God like that. That's a mean God. That God is harsh. He's not nice. God burned those people. Oh, they got stoned. God is not a, a nice God. Listen to me very carefully. The Bible says that God is what? Love. It doesn't say he's loving. He is love. That's deeper. That's his character. God is love. No one in here is love. You can be loving, but you're not love. God is love. Whatever he does, he functions on the basis of love. That's it. Jesus loved Achan and his family so much. I'm going to give you till tomorrow. You got the instruction, Achan. You were there in the camp of Israel. You heard that the punishment is you're going to be burned. I'm giving you time, Achan. I love you so much. Just confess the sin repent, turn from the sin, and you will be accepted. That's all you have to do. That's sin. We love sin. Brothers and sisters, listen to me very carefully. Got one more slide, and then I'm going to make my appeal. You know, it's very easy. It's very easy to look at other people and judge them based on what they're doing. You know what I mean? You look at somebody and you think you're a little holier than them because you don't do what they're doing. Hmm. You know, I used to be like that. I used to judge people that went to the movies. Oh, man, how did, why are they going to the movies? Oh, this morning, brothers and sisters, you have to look at the man or the woman in the mirror. We're not looking at anyone else in the church. 
The question is, what sin is in my life? What secret sin is in your life that you just don't want to give up? Jesus is saying to you and to me this morning, I am giving you what? Time. I'm giving you time. Your probation is closed. You're still alive. I'm giving you time to get things right and to give me that secret sin. I'm giving you time. I love you. I'm giving you time to repent. Why? Because you know what's going to happen that's so sad in the story of Achan? Achan is going to come up in the second resurrection. You heard what I just said? Achan and his entire family, they will come up a thousand years too late to be burned with fire for the second time. Wow. Now somebody in here is saying, well, <laughs> I'm a good Adventist. Listen to what she says. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 497. Among church members, that's all of us, in good and regular standing, there are, alas, what? Ooh. Oh, God help us. She says there are many Achans. She doesn't say a few here and there. In the church, you know what that means? Do you know what that means to be in good and regular standing? That means the conference, how they see you, how they view you, you have, you're a good person. You haven't done anything crazy. It doesn't matter what the conference sees or what Pastor Mirage sees. It matters what God sees. She says, inspired by God, she says, in the church, there are folk, they listen to sermons, they listen to Pastor Mirage, they're sitting down in the pews. But she says, many of them are Achans. In other words, many folk in the church, they're going to be lost. But God says, that doesn't have to happen. I'm giving you doesn't have to happen. I'm giving you time to give me that sin this morning. Another quote from the same author, same page. This is what we need to be doing, brothers and sisters. With humiliation and searching of heart, let each seek to discover the hidden sins that shut out God's presence. Mm. Wow. See, God's presence was shut out, the children of Israel, when they went to war against Ai, because they didn't have God's presence, 36 were slaughtered. She says, under divine inspiration, Alvin, you need to search your heart. See, the heart is so messed up, brothers and sisters, you don't know what's in you. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know why the Bible says, who can know it? You, know, you don't know yourself. You don't know, what you're, you don't know how bad you are without Jesus. I don't know how bad I am. I'm a mess without Christ. She says, hey, search your heart. God have mercy. I want you to be thinking this morning. My last slide, and then we're going to pray. Last slide. I want you to think. What is that sin that I'm holding on to? Is this sin worth losing heaven? Is this sin this precious to me? It was for Achan. But you know, at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, you know, you can read this story and it's kind of scary. If you're just honest, this, this stuff is scary. But you know, God does not operate based on fear. It's all about love. So here's the final question, and we're done. The message is very clear this morning that we need to repent. We need to turn from sin and run to Jesus. The question begs to be asked, what then leads me to repentance? What leads me to turn from sin and to run to Jesus? Is it fear? I'm afraid of hell. Do you think that's the motivation? No. 
Should I repent because I'm afraid of the pastor? I'm afraid of the conference. I want to be in good standing in the church. What, what leads me to repent? Don't miss this verse. The Bible says, Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering? Not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what, everybody? Ooh. That's it. We don't repent because of fear. When you look at the goodness of God in your life, man, God. Man, God has been so good to, to, to all of us. God, we've done sins, and God has not even exposed us. Did you hear what I just said? There are some things in your life, if that was exposed this morning on the PowerPoint screen, you would take off. But God's goodness, he covered that. God is so good, he did not expose your dirt. God, you've been so good, you woke me up this morning. God, you've been so good. You blessed me with a job. God, you've been so good, I have healthy kids. God, you've been so good, I have a loving church. God, you have been so good to me in spite of my unchristlike self. I'm alive. God, I'm alive. You know what people say? When, when they're in trouble, you know what people say when they get sick? Well, God is giving me what I deserve. Listen to me. If God gave you what you deserved, you would not wake up this morning. It's true. If God gave you what... <laughs> Man, God would destroy you today. That's what you deserve. The Bible says the wages of sin is what? But God's grace and mercy is so powerful. His grace is so powerful. He says, nah, I'm not going to destroy you. I'm going to wake you up this morning. You know why he gives you breath? You know why he gives you breath? Knowing that you keep on sinning. He keeps giving you the breath of life, hoping that one day, you will repent of that sin. Hoping one day that I will repent of that sin. Keeps on giving you breath, brothers and sisters. Only because of his goodness, we repent and run to Jesus. That's it. All heads bowed and eyes closed. Father, we see this morning... Very serious. God, your grace is so powerful. We only repent. We come to Jesus this morning only because of your goodness. You've been so good. So good. Don't expose us. We are living in spite of our unchristlike self. You are still so good. And so we repent this morning of sin. Because you love us and we love you. My first appeal, very clear, is my first appeal. You know that you have a sin in your life and you like it. You like this one. But you need to be delivered. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I just want you to sit there and think Lord, I have a sin. I like it. It is not a struggle. It's a secret. No one knows. Pastor doesn't know. Elders, they don't know. My spouse does not know. My children, my parents don't know. It is a sin. I like it. But this sin, if I don't confess and repent and forsake, is going to sever me from my beautiful Lord and Savior. And I can't afford that. So as you're sitting and I'm standing, what is that sin? What is that sin that you love so much? God says, I want it because I love you and I want to save you. And I'm giving you time to give that sin to me and I will accept you because of love. So whatever that sin or sins may be, we're going to bring those sins to Jesus this morning. So let us all kneel together, and we're going to, like the quote said, we're going to search our hearts this morning. And we're going to ask God, because we don't know ourselves, what is in me 
that sin that's in me that I need to confess and forsake. Let us pray silently. Father in heaven, Lord, the message is very clear. Secret sin is very dangerous. Lord, you're so gracious and you're so loving. You gave Achan and his entire family time. They had time, but with the time they had, they did not approach God. So, Lord, you have given all of us time this morning. We are alive. We're breathing. And so, Lord, this morning we repent of our sins. And whatever that sin is, we give it to you, dear God, and we ask for help. We need more power of the Holy Ghost in these last days. We pray, dear God, that we will all fall deeper in love with Jesus. And we repent not because of a fear of hell. We repent only because of your goodness toward us. The Bible says the goodness of God leads us to repentance. That's what the Bible says. God, you've been too good for us to hold this sin and not give it to you. We ask that you'll empower us, that we'll hold on to Jesus for dear life and never give up. Lord, we all have hope. Every person in this building can be in heaven. We can all be saved. Oh, God, forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when you come back the second time, I pray that all of us here, that we will be part of the first resurrection who are caught up in the air to meet you because we fell in love with you while living on planet Earth. In Jesus' name I pray, let every child of the King say, Amen. God bless you all. You're going to make it. Don't give up.